Uh, I want to start by saying how much I enjoyed your movie and uh, how happy I am you guys have the time to talk. And um, But before we get into the movie, I have a few other kind of questions. Um, so uh, for the actors on this call, what TV series would you love to guest star on? And Gita, what TV series would you love to guest direct? I'll go first. I'd love to be in Australia and, and guest star on The Wilds. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I would love to direct The Wilds. There you go. A little what? reunion. Reunion. I hate this show. <laughs> I'm so jealous of this show. Like both of you guys, what? I want a piece. And that's the time that this is when Soph says that she wants to be somewhere else. So. <laughs> She'll be like, oh. So oh, yeah, I would also guest star on The Wilds. <laughs> no, um, actually, you know what? I was talking about The Boys last night with some friends, and it's a really good show. It's dark. I would love to do something like that. Like a superhero would be sick. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, actually. <laughs> uh, uh, what would I like to do? Hmm, maybe. I would also like to guest star on... Um, uh, Miss Marvel. Yeah, that would be sick. Um, but Invincible, you have given me a good idea though. Invincible, which the, that, that's an incredible show as well on Prime. And I've just binged that. That'd be fun. Also totally different, but it's reality. I've been binging Survivor. Don't know if any of you guys have seen it. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. my God. Very familiar with Survivor. I'm I've, obsessed. I've based my l entire life on it. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I, living I, I, uh, I wish I could compete on the show and, and just, uh, <laughs> and try and survive 40 days. So that's another one. I might be exaggerating, but 72 seasons of Survivor. Um, so I'm, and I'm joking, but there's a lot. Have you, did you start yeah. at the very beginning? No, so I started on season 28 with Tony, who's a legend apparently, because I know he went on to win it twice. But um, yeah, I'm, I've just been binging a couple of seasons, but it's been really fun. We don't have it back home in the UK, so something new and different, you know? I love that show. It's so, it, there's so much drama. Real life drama, so much. Oh my God, the issues are crazy. <laughs> I would never I want to direct, well, I shouldn't say that. I wouldn't want to direct Survivor because I like to be inside and, you know, not eating bugs and things like that. I would direct, I would love to direct on Russian Doll. Did you guys see Russian Doll? Yeah. Love that show. Yes. I love Atlanta and I love Insecure. I would love to, I mean, if I'm just like wishing for things, that's what I would wish for. I asked this question of a lot of people, you never know. Someone might see it, you, you know, you really never know. I'm available. Um, I, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the next question is, and I don't mean just in the last year, I mean whole life. What movie or movies do you think you've seen the most? Sneakers for me. I've seen sneakers a million times. I've seen Soul a bunch of times. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Great film. It's such a feel good film. Yeah. Uh, Nacho Libre, it's my go to. Any time of the day. I swear to God. <laughs> I, can, I can recite it in my sleep. <laughs> I, <laughs> brilliant. Oh, Every time you watch it, it's just Jack Black and um, I think his name's Stephen or the character. Oh my God, I'm getting confused. Hector. Their, their nuances are like incredible. Like every little thing that they do, every time I watch it, I find something new. So naturally, Libre. Do you guys have any movie or TV show props at home? I have, I'm like right off. I have the, um, yes, let me tell you all about my movie memorabilia. I, um, I have a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man figure from Ghostbusters. I have a prop from a movie I've been in a really long time ago. I did a movie when I was 17 and I died in it. And I was scalped. Um, Did you oh keep God. the scalp? Yeah, I kept the brain. Nice the piece, That's the head true. piece. It was a. It was not. A, it was the best movie. Um, but yeah, it's still That's, cool. That was pretty cool. <laughs> kept my brain. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I've got. I've got a few bits and bobs from that like plays I've done in the past. Stolen stuff from set. Uh, no, no, you didn't steal. You hypothetically borrowed. You, I let I me mean, yeah exactly. I borrowed and I will return it on the cross parts again down the line, um, inevitably and hopefully. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's about it. I'm, I'm trying to collect stuff as I go at the moment, but my suitcases are just filling up and I'm running out of space. So, it's got to be things. Oh, from India, sweets and spices. I have the the her backdrop in her room. Oh, nice. 
That's a good one. Wait, is it the woman kicking the unicorn? The girl kicking the unicorn? Yes. Yeah. She gave that to me as a rap gift. Yes. <laughs> it's a good one. It's sweet. For each of you, do you remember what it was early in your life that got you interested in wanting to pursue what you're doing? Was it a performance? Was it a movie? Like, what was, do you remember, was there a spark early in your life that like, oh my God, I want to do that. Cameron Diaz dancing in her underwear in, um, is it Charlie's Angels? Charlie's Angels, thank you. (laughs) That scene, man. I was like, wow, you can do that? (laughs) (laughs) I want to do that. You know, like not that, but you know, just she owned her power. She just owned it. You know what I mean? Like she was dancing in her underwear and she was just like, she looked great. I don't know. Cool to see. It was cool to see. I feel like I have multiple moments. Um, I've, I, I was always a writer. So I feel like I, I always wanted to be creative and express myself, but I think for film, I mean, I have certain scenes that have stuck in my head and certain films that have, you know, that are close to my heart. Um, I think it was really, I had written a short play and the play went up on stage and um, someone else directed it. And I felt like, oh, that's, but I want, I want to direct it. Like I, whatever I'd written, I felt like I wanted to still sort of control how it was being portrayed. Um, So I think maybe that was a real spark that led me to want to learn how to direct. I think that was probably it. (laughs) I've always loved attention. And I think like when I was a kid, I used to tell stories and if I felt like someone wasn't wasn't listening, I'd like start all the way at the top and I'd just talk relentlessly for like five minutes straight to my mom about the most mundane thing. So I think it probably started there. Um, But I I grew up watching Bollywood and I was obsessed with that whole world. And um, I used to reenact scenes with my cousins and want to be Shah Rukh Khan. So it probably was that even though I don't really watch any of those films anymore, uh, I get very nostalgic <laughs> when I look back at them, you yeah. know. Childhood. So uh, yeah, probably that. I was probably just very self-obsessed as a child. <laughs> at least he's aware, you know. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably, but yeah. Uh, jumping into why I actually get to talk to you guys today. Um, everyone watching this, no one will have seen the movie yet. Each, I hate asking like the generic thing, but can you describe the movie to people that aren't familiar sure. with? So India Sweets and Spices is a story of Alia, played by Sophia Ali, um, who's a college kid who comes home between her freshman and sophomore year um, and thinks it's gonna be a really boring summer. Her parents are nagging her. She's just back in this community. um, And she ends up finding out all these secrets about her family. And those secrets sort of turn her world upside down and they galvanize her to make a big change in her world. And then also for her parents to make a big change in their world. So sort of a coming of age for her, but also for her parents, for her mom specifically. What was it about the script and story that immediately pulled you in and said, I want to be a part of this? And I was touching on this uh, when we were talking the other day, Gita. It, it was basically just how um, relatable this story is from, for me from hearing Varun's side of the story through the eyes of my, my parents. And, and um, first of all, like the story of my dad coming to the UK when he was around that age um, and younger than I am now and um, just trying to assimilate. And I feel like me then being born as as a second generation uh, Indian in the UK, I've seen my parents working so hard my whole life and just kind of appreciating that and and seeing that, you know, Varun's also in that headspace of his parents are working really hard as, as the, any, I mean, any child of an immigrant sees their parents struggle and um, work hard to try and provide a better life. So that was something which kind of struck a chord with me, uh, definitely. And it it was mostly also just the fact that this is such a beautiful script with an amazing, amazing um, like writer, which is also our director and um, it's female led. And I was able to play a part which helps kind of aid that story in a small way, but one which is really important, I think and uh, really exciting to help what, what Gita was just describing the movies about to help kind of um, help Alia navigate that, that difficulty that she's processing as she's um, figuring out what's going, on, what's going on at home and stuff like that. And whilst also navigating his own, um, you know, they, they really help each other. And I thought it was a really interesting dynamic.
I guess just to piggyback off of what he said, because I, you know, agree with everything. Obviously, I don't relate to it all because I'm not from the UK, but um, uh, yeah, um, also so stoked just to see it like cross my path. I was like, whoa, oh my God, what? This is happening? Like now people are going to watch this? You're, you're saying that like people want to see this kind of stuff? That's sick. You know, that was the first time that would, that had it even crossed my mind, you know, like, oh, okay, well, yeah, yeah, here we are. You mean like the, yeah, the all South Asian cast and that kind of thing. Not, you know, I'm not like going to be playing a stereotype or like the best friend my whole career. That's not, you know. The, one of the things that I like is when I'm sort of, a curtain is removed to another um, culture to another group of people that I'm not exposed to on an everyday basis. I, I love that. And I feel like this film pulls the curtain back on this, I guess you could argue typical Indian American family, you know, and what's going on. And can you sort of talk about that aspect that, you know, you are pulling that curtain back? Yeah, I think it is certainly that, um, you know, I grew up in a um, homogenous society, uh, but there were Indians in our community and the Indians would all get together and be part of these dinner parties. And for us, it was just, that's just how we lived. It didn't feel like there was two different worlds necessarily one or the other, um, but it was very natural for us. And I think that's important for me in this film is to say that this is not some other community. This is not some, it's very, we're integrated into American life. This is just what we do on the weekends. We go and we eat our food and we wear our outfits, you know, and that sort of thing. But it is, I grew up as an Indian American. I grew up here. Um, and so it is, it is sort of pulling back the curtain on the traditions maybe and um, the sort of, uh, just this community that comes together um, that maybe you don't see all the time in mainstream media. That being said, I feel like the story is very universal. This is a small town. It's a small town that just happens to be full of Indians in the midst of America. And I think that the three of us are actually really a solid good example of what she just described. Here I am in Australia, you know, <laughs> totally Indian. Yeah. Just in Australia, you know. <laughs> I would imagine that um, obviously you had to make this film on a budget. You had a finite amount of days. This is not some big Marvel movie. Uh, can you sort of talk about the challenges of trying to bring this to life, obviously on a budget? Yes. Um, well, the film does take place over the course of several glittering, glamorous dinner parties. Um, and so we had to really use our budget wisely to put as much money as we could on screen. Um, so, you know, just, we had a wonderful, really deep bench of actors. People brought their own outfits at times, you know, um, people were very, very, uh, I think it's the same as, as what Sophia and Rish were saying. People were very excited to be part of this film because it's an all South Asian cast, almost all. There's like maybe one or two non-South Asian characters in the whole film. And so people were really willing to, to join in and to bring their own resources. You know, we borrowed a car from our, I <laughs> think from our AC. Um, that, that features in one of the scenes, you know, everyone was just really willing to pitch in. Um, and I think that helped a lot because we did have a very finite amount of time and a finite amount of dollars. So, yeah. yeah. It was actually really inspirational to see a lot on set. You know, you could tell that people were just there because they believed in it and they wanted to be there, which is really, really freaking cool. <laughs> you know, they're not like, I need overtime, you know? <laughs> People just to add on to that. It was, oh, sorry, Rich. Oh, no, I was going to, I was about to say the same thing, but it was my first time on, on, a, on a movie set ever. So for me, like, I feel really lucky that that was the first experience I got to have because, um, like, every, you know, just to reiterate, there was so much passion behind it and everyone was so, so thrilled and, um, like, honored to be there that it really, like, was just this amazing bubble that I didn't want, I didn't want it to pop, you know. It, it felt like it was too quick. So yeah, it was, it was just a joy to be there. Uh, I'm always curious about editing because it's the final rewrite and you really never know what you have until you step in the editing room. So can you sort of talk about, you get in the editing room, you have your footage, are you freaking out or are you like, oh, I have it? <laughs> um, I feel like I, uh, I love working with an amazing editor and we had amazing editors on this project because I'm so, my eyes are so tired at that point. So I don't know, I feel like I walk in going like, I don't know 
if we got it. I honestly don't know. It's a sea of footage to me. It's a sea of scenes. Um, and then coming back to it and seeing it in even the assembly and seeing something that's like three to four hours, long, whatever it is, I'm like, oh, that feels like a relief to me. Um, once we finish shooting, I feel like, you know, what I've seen in the monitor, what I've seen on dailies is, is wonderful. But then having someone else come in and say, oh, and helping me rewrite the story a little bit and take pieces that I wouldn't have thought of that fit in certain, I mean, I love, I love that collaboration. Um, so I, I, I don't ever feel like, yes, it's, it's, we nailed it. I never feel like that. I'm all just like, where am I <laughs> at the end of a movie? And then coming into the edit room is very comforting actually to see all of it laid out. And then I, you know, knowing what you have, I think really helps. I've spoken to a lot of actors and some actors, they cannot watch themselves. It makes them crazy. And other actors love to dissect their performance and then rip it apart. So for the two of you, what was it like for you guys watching this film? Could you watch it? Can you watch yourself? Um, I'm not particularly self-conscious, conscious. Um, sorry. Uh, I, now I am. Uh, no. <laughs> um, um, so, I mean, I don't like, I don't analyze myself too much, but I also have a hard time seeing it. Like that's me, you, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, um, it's like, there's a difference watching a movie. You're invested in the story and, and, you know, you, because you're wondering what's going to happen. But when I'm watching myself, there's like none of that mystery. So it's not like entertaining for me. You know, I just feel like I'm watching myself do something that I did. I feel like I'm so self-critical, which is like, I mean, I'm still so new to this whole thing. I say that, it's just been a minute, but I feel like I'm new to it. You know, I haven't seen myself in a lot of stuff. And this is one of the things which I've seen myself, you know, when I did get to watch it. Um, and for me, like, I was nervous, but I loved watching the film because I was just thinking back to, oh, this day was so fun because I remember doing all of this. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I should have done this differently or um, I hate the way I did that or, oh, actually, I really like what I did here. It's just like, oh, that was a sick day and we all had fun. And I remember like us talking about this afterwards and the creative process. I definitely don't grow as an actor from watching myself. I grow more on set, I feel like, in exploring avenues that way in, in real time rather than criticizing myself afterwards. Yeah. You're such a good, you're, if I can just jump in, you're so great on set. Both of you are, of course, you're amazing actors. Sophia has a real, um, looseness isn't the right word, but you're very um, in the moment. You're very spontaneous, which I think is, it's, it's great. It helps a lot on set. Yeah. Yeah, there's some improv and stuff that you've done that have, has made it into the film, which is exciting, so. It's, I've been doing these like, okay, I'm, this is something I need to work on now. So every project is sort of like, I'm gonna hammer that down, but I'm trying to be better at the technical side of it, you know, like understanding where the shots are and playing towards that and not so much being like, seeing even just how that translates and like what it looks like. It, Am I going to look worse or better? I don't know. You know, it's, it's a mystery and I'm excited. <laughs> One of the things I enjoyed, oh, we, I, something like this is like the big group scenes. It's where it pulls you in and you sort of like, you know, it, it explores that area and with all the different characters. So I'm curious if you could all talk about filming those big group scenes. And now is the time to tell me who ruined the most things. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely me. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do, Rich? Oh, babe, probably I was babe. Falling asleep in the green room. I was like, I was stumbling in like this. Uh, no, I hope not. Um, those group scenes for me were like so much fun because, like, we were going back to what we were saying before. Everyone was just so excited to be there, and we had like a whole bunch of really great supporting um, background artists who were like just elated. And it just made the environment amazing. Was it always going to be called India Sweet Sweets and Spices? No, the original title was Dinner with Friends, which is not a great title because there's our, you know, there's a Pulitzer Prize winning play called Dinner with Friends. They're, they made a movie out of it, also called Dinner with Friends. Um, so no, it was not always called that. So the the name came a little bit later. I could sort of see the importance of putting India in the title, but I could also see why you wouldn't put it. Was there did you feel like, was there a lot of debate on that? There was some debate. Um, I will say I have generally shied away from adding India to a title because it happens to star Indian people. I feel like we don't always need to put the ethnicity front and center. 
And also the sweets and spices thing, um, you know, it comes from this, it's an homage to a lot of Indian stores that we all grew up with from, you know, Jersey to wherever, all over the country, there are India sweets and spices um, or some, you know, variation of that name. Um, for me, I did, I feel like there are certain signifiers that always turn up in movies about Indians. There's mango this or, you know, wedding that. Um, so I do try to avoid that. And that's why I didn't title it, you know, something pointing to the ethnicity initially. That being said, a lot of this, a lot of the crucial scenes in this film take place at the grocery store. Um, so it seemed to make sense when we were trying to brainstorm, okay, what could be alternate titles? It seemed to make sense that the, the store that they were portraying in the film um, became more front and center. I definitely curious if you guys could each just touch on real quick uh, what it means to be premiering at Tribeca in the film festival. It's a dream come true, and especially after the crazy year we've had with COVID and all that, of course, um, being at the first in-person film festival in the States is huge. And the fact that I get to be here in New York is huge. So it's really meaningful to me. It's been a long journey. <laughs> so I'm glad to be here. Are you guys both in New York right now? No, no. I was about to say I'm gutted I can't be there, but it means so much that it's- You're not it's, gonna be there? I know I'm filming, but uh, it's, it's amazing. It's so cool that, you know, people get to have this experience of our movie together in the cinema um, because it's, it's really something which I think people would love to, to share this experience. You know, I think it will be really great for them to be able to do that. Um, and what an amazing festival to be a part of. I mean, it's a privilege. Yeah, I wish I could be there, but yeah, I'm really excited for everyone. It means a lot. It really does. I I wish that I could be there more than anything. Um, also, in the name of progress, you know, it's great. It's it's so cool. It just speaks volumes, you know, that people want to see this. That 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 Tribeca would be excited about it, you know. I want to see everything with a crowd. It makes every movie better. Yeah, it just does for sure. You know, for sure. Uh, well, unless you have a terrible audience. <laughs> Before I run out of time with you guys, uh, because I can see the clock, um, I definitely have to ask, uh, uh, Sophia, I, I of course have to ask you, how has it been going on Wild season two? And for fans of the series, what can you say? Oh man, what can I say? I don't even know what I can say, um, but it's been so amazing. There's boys now, um, there's a boys island. So now we've introduced eight men into the cast and they're actually all phenomenal phenomenal actors and people um they're like it's just the most perfect additions i'm so excited for people to watch them and fall in love with them just as much as they did the women and also the girls you know are on their own venture Riz, i have to ask you uh about miss marvel just because that is uh really fucking cool sorry for the language um <laughs> it's, it's great. amazing yeah, so talk, talk a little bit about uh, what was it like making that series and what fans can look forward to. Ah, uh, um, it's just been an absolute dream of mine. And I'm still kind of pinching myself that it's happened. Um, and, you know, you know how the Marvel thing goes. I mean, anyone who's a fan of it will love, will love to see it, I hope. And I hope the fans enjoy our show um it's it's just amazing to be a part of the mcu and to work with the amazing amazing people that i've, I've got to uh that i've looked up to for so long and um like our creators and stuff so it's just it's been it's been really cool it's been really really cool and i can't wait for it to be out there yeah something something that i'm actually and i'll just talk about this but like gita obviously uh it's great when your actors are also in these other big up projects because it does help get people to see a movie like this, which is not a Marvel movie or being pushed hardcore on Amazon. Like it brings a lot of, it's like, you know, it shines a light on this. Can you sort of, you know, I guess if you guys could, if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, no, that's huge. You're absolutely right. Because we're such, you know, we're an indie film and we're like I said, all South Asian cast again, you know, it's very hard to break through when there are big Marvel movies and big summer movies, just movies in general, we're on a much smaller scale than most of these films. Um, and so, you know, Soph and Rish are such, they're amazing people and they're amazing actors. So it's amazing, amazing. Oh, basic. It's just always amazing. Uh, everything's amazing. Um, 
to see them, you know, blossom in these new roles as well. I feel like it's, you know, I'm very cheesy and I'm also a mother. So I'm just like, oh, look at these guys go out to the world. <laughs> and they didn't need anything from me, of course, because they're just amazing on their own. Amazing again. I can't think of another word right now. Um, but it does. You're absolutely right. It helps bring attention to our film because they are, um, their talents are being noticed um, in bigger and bigger arenas. And that's fantastic. It's fantastic for our film. <laughs> I know that we wouldn't be in this position. I'm speaking on your behalf as well. Sorry to have said we, but um, you know, where it's true. We wouldn't be in this position without, without Gita, honestly. She's the most important great. person on the planet. And she really <laughs> is like a mother to me. Uh, so it's, it's just every project's different. And um, hopefully each one of them, hopefully people want to watch Miss Marvel because they've seen me in India Sweets, you know, and they know I'm part of that. So I think it's, it's a two way street and it's just, it's an honor to be working in the industry at the moment. Gita, are, I have to ask you, are you writing anything or uh, what's your next thing? Yes, I am currently writing something for a studio, um, which I also hope to direct. Um, and then I'm also writing my own specs. I'm always writing a million projects at once. So I'm writing my own specs again, hopefully with the eye on directing those as well. And then I'm developing some TV. I've got um, two TV shows that are in development right now. So we'll see what happens. Things are moving, you know, stuff on the stove. Who cooking actually away, should so. come direct an episode of The Wild? Yeah, I mean, I'll just fly over. Yeah. Do you want to? You should. You should. Yeah, I'll, let's put that out there. Let's put it out into the world. The wild's amazing. <laughs>